Okay, good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning. Good yeah. morning, ma'am. Seems like a very good morning. Okay, everyone, so full of uh, energy. Let's pray and let's uh, get started. Uh, could someone from the online batch please go ahead and lead in prayer? Please unmute. Yeah, I'll go. Yes, please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity that you bless us as uh, we get into the class of faith. You, from the scripture, you have simply said that a mustard seed faith can move a mountain. And faith is faith in us for the God. So we'll move, uh, learn more about you, understand that, and spread the gospel across to the regions wherever you want us to go. Use us as an instrument for the purpose which you called us. I really thank you. Pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sri Raj. We'll look at some of the key points that we discussed in the last class. We said that um, faith is based on relationship and uh, faith is of the heart even sometimes when we don't have all the answers in our mind, we can still have faith in the heart. We can still believe. And we looked at how God calls us to live by faith. So it's not just some of our actions or some of our decisions that are based on faith, but our entire life must be based on faith. We stated that the source of our faith is the word of God. If we are lacking in the knowledge, understanding or revelation of the word of God, faith will also be lacking. And that is why one must take time in God's word, meditate in God's word. That's the place from where faith is conceived. When we hear God speak, faith comes from that place. Um, if you recall the uh, word of God is uh, what inspires us, but then there are prophetic words, there are uh, dreams, visions, promptings that God puts in our hearts. And from there, our faith begins that, okay, God is speaking to me uh, by the Holy Spirit or by his word. And these are all the things that God is going to do in my life. We looked at the fact that faith must be exercised. So how does faith become? stronger, just like a muscle we strengthen through exercise. The more we uh, step out in faith, the stronger our faith becomes. The lesser we use our faith, the weaker it remains. And therefore, we must exercise our faith. So today, we will look at other things. I'm on page 11, our notes, in the section about the factors that influence faith. Most often, when we talk about faith, we just stop with that. You know, we um, don't necessarily talk about other things. Just grow in the faith and that's about it. Right? However, when we look at scripture, scriptures tell us that there are other aspects of the Christian life that you and I are supposed to grow in. And our growth in all these areas is connected. So we can't only say that I will grow in faith and I'm not going to worry about other things. right? So for our wholesome growth and our complete development in God, there are different interrelated factors. What are these factors? 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 8 has a list of uh, many, many things connected to the Christian life which go hand in hand with faith. Things like virtue. What is virtue? Anyone? What is virtue? Character. It's character. What we are made up of. Right? What um, comes out when we encounter tough situations, that what we are, that's what we are made up of. Right? When the rubber hits the road, 
what comes out of us you know are we still kind are we still believing god are we still walking in love that's our character who we are when nobody is watching us that's our character and the scripture tells us that along with growing in faith one must grow in virtue or character the stronger we get in our faith hopefully we're also becoming stronger in our character of who we are now there are other aspects connected aspects such as knowledge 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 of what you know knowledge of god our understanding of who he is our understanding of who we are our understanding of the word of god that also needs to deepen i can't be in the same place of knowing things the way i was maybe 10 years ago when i accepted christ i must uh, progressively make um, development or growth even in the area of knowledge so we said faith virtue knowledge self control self control is a fruit of the holy spirit so the more the holy spirit is working in our lives there is an evidence that he is at work and we know uh, there are things listed in the fruit of the spirit in galatians 5 one of which is self control so self control uh, in the life of a believer displays a deep work of the holy spirit in their lives so growing in self control as well perseverance perseverance is simply um, our endurance in other words an attitude where we don't give up we don't give up right we continue on we press forward no matter how hard the difficulty or the challenge so one must develop in endurance as well now these are all we could uh, say signs of maturity as well maturity as a believer faith is strong but all these other aspects are also strong what are the um, other points given in this in this uh, section godliness godliness meaning our reverence towards god the way we honor god in all areas of our life that is godliness then of course there is a mention of brotherly kindness so our relationship with god it's quite interesting god does not only say okay you worship me you honor me you you uh, have reverence for me and that's about it many times what we end up doing we say my relationship with god is very strong i don't care about people why should i care about people why should i care about other brothers and sisters but look at this in the list is also brotherly kindness so as much as our vertical relationship is important so is also our horizontal relationship brotherly kindness or the way we um, deal with people as a believer is also a sign of maturity so all of these put together brotherly kindness and finally there is love okay love uh, which is the foundation of all things it's a fruit of the spirit and love um displays god himself god is love and we talk about how the god kind of love or agape agape is unconditional love so living a life as a believer uh in that christ kind of love associated with faith is what god is asking for so we can't say that i have faith i don't care about anything else i don't care about character i don't care about you know my relationship with people i don't care about love i don't care about what else godliness self control if we state that then we are not aligned to what the word of god says there needs to be a holistic growth a holistic development so faith along with all these aspects and in fact peter who wrote this epistle in verse 8 he says if these things are yours and abound you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ so he is saying that we will uh, we will be fruitful in our relationship with christ in our understanding of who god is and obviously uh, come from a place of understanding comes application whatever we uh, understand and we believe 
we apply that in our lives if i believe something that okay honoring god is important then i do that in the way i worship in the way i live out my life and the decisions that i make it's coming from my place of believing application right it's a result of what i believe and so if i want to have a fruitful understanding of who god is i need all these aspects so god wants us to be an all rounder if you want to put it like that faith together with all these aspects is what shows um uh, uh, depicts a mature believer and we must all progress towards this now apart from these aspects uh, when paul writes to timothy in first timothy chapter 1 verse 19 he also specifies another important attribute or attitude what is that you know that is a good conscience a good conscience we have faith but that must be coupled with a good conscience so when our conscience is healthy when our conscience is sensitive whenever we do something wrong you know we miss the mark our conscience tells us a conscience is a compass the word of god is a compass but god has installed or god has put a compass in every single human being whether people know god or they don't know god there is a compass for morality people know what is right and wrong even before they come to know christ when something evil happens you know there's an uproar people are like how can this happen it's not right why there is a moral compass or a conscience a healthy conscience a conscience which is alive which is sensitive towards god we must preserve that one must never kill their conscience you know when we kill our conscience it simply means we don't listen to that small voice in our hearts that says this is wrong don't do it don't go in this direction if we keep shutting down that voice and saying oh forget it i don't want to listen to it i don't want to listen to it we are killing our conscience and the more we do that we will no longer be able to hear that voice that gentle voice which is telling us what is right and what is true so one needs faith but one also needs a good conscience and when these things work together it's you know wonderful that's what a believer should be about a mature believer uh, a believer full of faith a believer with the right or a healthy conscience okay so this is the combination that god is looking for as far as our faith walk is concerned now let's look at the next section here that says uh, faith causes the power of god and his word to be released so there is um, a scripture given here in our notes from second thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 11 could someone go ahead and read it aloud please use the mic for the benefit of the online students therefore we also pray always for you that our god would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power okay amen so paul is telling the thessalonians we'll focus in on the last part of the scripture and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power so the way god works how does he work god releases power when there is faith so he will work the he will fulfill the work of faith with power a good example is moses now god told moses lead all the people out of um, you know pharaoh's rule take them to a land that i will show you the promised land and here is moses taking all these people and he now faces the red sea it's a difficult situation what is he going to do there's a red sea now and he has to take these thousands of people across but god gave him an 
instruction. What was the instruction? Take your rod. So there is a rod which is also uh, called as the rod of Moses sometimes. And God told him, Moses, just lift up your rod. Right? Lift up your rod. Go stand in front of the Red Sea. Lift up your rod. Okay. Now think together with me. How does it make sense? The Pharaoh's armies are behind, chasing the people. The Red Sea is in front. And Moses is looking to God for a solution. God is saying, lift up the rod. Do you think it's going to take faith on Moses' part to actually lift up the rod? Yes, it's going to take faith. Moses has to believe that if I follow this simple instruction, God didn't give him an instruction the way he gave Noah. Okay, build an ark. It will take time. These are the dimensions of the ark. Or later on, God gave Moses other instructions. How to put the tabernacle together. Many specifications there. But right now, just lift up the rod. It sounds unthinkable. Like, God, what can this do if I lift the rod? I am in a very difficult situation right now. But thank God. He followed God's simple instruction through faith. Faith. I don't know what's going to happen, but if God said this, I am going to take a step of faith. So what was Moses' step of faith? Simple. Lift up the rod. Many times, God gives us a simple instruction in a complex situation. And for us, we wonder, how can this change anything, God? But thank God for the faith of Moses. He followed the simple instruction. He lifted up the rod. Now, what happened after that? We saw in the scripture here, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 11, work of faith with power. Work of faith with power. What was the work of faith? Lift up the rod. What happened next? We all know the Red Sea parted. What was that? God's power. So man's work of faith, seemingly small work of faith, demonstrates or releases God's power. Suddenly the Red Sea parted. Thousands of people are walking through a, a dry path. But when Pharaoh and his men, they tried doing it, what happened? It just closed down on them. They all died. What was the difference? Moses and the people, they were walking by faith. By faith. God said, he'll do this. Okay, fine. We believe you, God. One work of faith. Simple. Lift up the rod. Keep walking forward. Work of faith with power. It's, it's an amazing combination. Every time you and I take one step, anyone try to do a, a very difficult assignment or submit a paper of 3,000 words, 5,000 words, you know the best thing to do is just start. Starting is the trouble that we all have. But just start one step. What is that starting? Work of faith. Okay, I started. And as you're working on it, the ideas are flowing. You know, the thoughts are coming through. Um, you sort of, you feel like God is showing you how to do this assignment. And suddenly, your assignment is completed. Your work of faith with this power. In other words, you take one step, God takes 10 steps to make it happen. Amen? So that is how faith works. Faith works. When? We take one step and trust that God will release his power. He usually does the big part of the assignment. But he is expecting us to do that small part. Follow the instruction. Follow the instruction. Take a step of faith. That's why we keep saying a step of faith. Even one step of faith. You know, you go ahead. 
with your studies or you go ahead with your project, you go ahead with your job, you go ahead with, um, you know, your ministry, what God is calling you to do. You go ahead and pray for someone. You go ahead and release a word, a prophetic word that you're receiving in your heart. That's a work of faith. What happens next? The power of God just comes. He takes the 10 steps and he releases his glory. That's how God works. So we must be bold enough to take a step of faith. Okay. And faith is what releases the power of God. The example which is given here, one in one more scripture, Luke 145 is that of Mary. Okay, Mary, a young girl whom God chose to be the mother uh, of the Son of God. Again, she found herself in an extraordinary situation, unmarried and a call to mother the Son of God. What is she going to do? Luke chapter 1 verse 45, it says, Blessed is she who believed. For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So what is the good thing that Mary did? She believed. Faith. Yeah. So when God says something, God promises something, God gives us a vision. What, do we, what should we do? Start by faith. Like Mary, she believed. Can God say that about us when he speaks to us? He believed. Or she believed. Blessed is she who believed. And so that needs to be our testimony. When we believe, then God is able to do things in our lives. But when we are lacking in our faith, when we don't believe, that's when the difficulty happens. You know, even God uh, is limited and unable to do his miracles. So that is what God is expecting from us. So Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 2, uh, it talks about a group of people and it says that their faith did not amount to anything. Or, you know, there, there was nothing that came out of uh, people who did not mix faith with the word that they heard. Now, just think about this. You know, in church, there are hundreds of people, hundreds, even thousands of people. Same. Uh, same message, same word of God, everybody is listening. Over a period of time, it's possible that some people have gone ahead with God. Right? They've moved forward with God. But it's possible that some people never really made any progress in their spiritual life. How is that? Po how did that happen? It's the same person, uh, same message, same word. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2, it says, The word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So what was the problem? We're not mixing faith to the word that we hear. So it's uh, an attitude or a mindset where we come and listen and we don't have um, you know, we, we don't have a prayer or we don't have a, a thought in our heart that says, okay, God is going to speak to me today. We just listen. Huh? Preacher is saying something, just listen. Finish the service, go home. Or someone saying something, listen. Fine. We're not mixing our faith with the word. How to get a benefit or a profit from the word that we are listening to? We need a believing heart. And we need to step out in faith. This is what is required. Word can keep coming. But when there's no faith that is receiving that word, it's not going to work in our hearts. It's not going to work in our lives. So we need a believing heart. Wherever we go, we need a believing heart. Right? Maybe Sunday school. You know, someone's doing a Sunday school uh, program and some kids are on stage. And uh, one of the children comes and shares the message on that Sunday. Do you think God can speak through that? Do you think God can uh, give us wisdom through that? God can release some keys to unlock, you know, profound mysteries through that? It's possible because it's not even the child, it's the word 
wherever i'm hearing the word my heart is saying god is speaking to me i'm getting something out of this you know my faith is activated that's how we listen that's how we receive so the word has to come and fall on good ground what is good ground a believing heart where the word comes it's mixed with faith then it profits us but if it just comes and falls on stony ground nothing happen you know no uh, no results emerge from that so that's what god is looking at and that's what god wants so in the first chapter that we have gone through we have understood a few important um aspects about faith and we will continue to learn more if you have any thoughts or questions at this point please feel free you can ask uh, and then we will go to chapter 2 here all right so uh, let's continue then we're going to chapter 2 here that talks about god's sovereignty grace and faith so when we consider the subject of faith sometimes there is a question if god is almighty and god is all powerful why do we need faith why can't he just do what he uh, you know what he does from his nature he is a good god he is a mighty god and he is a supernatural god he can work miracles in our lives why do we need faith but in the life of jesus we'll go to that later on where we see jesus was looking for faith he was always looking for faith so what is this um you know it sort of a uh, two contrasting things that god has put together a sovereign god and yet he is telling man you need faith for things to happen in your life so we're going to try and understand the sovereignty of god as well as the um the power of faith or the importance of faith when we say god is sovereign we are saying god is almighty in every way he is the king of kings he is the lord of lords he is the ruler of all things um and you know we we can see from scripture psalm 115 verse 3 there it says but our god is in heaven he does whatever he pleases in job 42 verse 2 god you can do everything if it rained yesterday did god had to take any of our permission to do it right does he need many approvals to get things done not at all he can do whatever he wants to do anything that he pleases he is able to do and we see scriptures that tell us that his dominion is an everlasting dominion in daniel chapter 4 verse 34 and his kingdom is from generation to generation so how long will the rule and reign of god stay or stand answer is forever forever we don't need a replacement to the throne of god for our uh, in our experience we see across the world leaders change you know governments change rules change regulations change what about god we just saw his dominion is forever his kingdom is to all generations generation to generation people will come people will go he remains the same that's his authority that's his power so when we say he is sovereign this is what we are looking at the majesty of god the greatness of god the glory of god in the old testament scriptures 
um, God was called Adonai, you know, the great God, the sovereign God, sovereign God, Adonai. He doesn't need anybody's permission and he's always ruling. His, the, his kingdom is forever. Now, this same God is also a God of grace. We know that he uh, is compassionate, he is gracious, he is long suffering, and he is abundant in mercy. So, we have some scriptures in our notes here. How about we read these scriptures? Psalm 86 and verse 15. One person can go ahead and read that, and another person kindly look up Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. It's all in your notes. You just have to read it out. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering mm -hmm. and abundant in mercy and truth. Yes. Thank you. One more person, the other other passage. Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. The Lord is a gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is to is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his work. Okay, wonderful. So it gives us a, a picture of a God who is compassionate, gracious, loving and kind, extending mercy. However, you know, we see scriptures where the word of God says that God will have compassion on whom he will have compassion. Now, he can have compassion on everyone if he wants to, but he will have compassion on whom he will have compassion. That's what we're trying to say is that though God's mercy is available for everyone, only some end up experiencing it. Why? Here we all get this question, why, in our minds. If God has already provided, you know, God uh, has no partiality, the scripture says. He is um, gracious to all. Why is it that only some people are experiencing of his grace and his mercy? Or even salvation, for that matter. Salvation is for all. Who did Jesus die for? Few people? No. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But is the whole world saved? We're still in the process of uh, preaching Christ, proclaiming the truth of the gospel. People need to respond by faith. God has made everything available and yet people are not accessing it. Why? Because the element of faith is what gives access to God's provision. He's a sovereign God. Everything is available. His mercy, His compassion, it's available. But only some are receiving it. So this is where we will understand how faith works. Okay? There's something about uh, our believing that affects the way God works. It's hard to, it's hard to uh, digest that. When God is all-powerful and he can do whatever he wants, he still depends on our faith. Only if there is faith can he do something in our lives. So there are many things that God would proclaim to us. If we believe it, it works. If we don't believe it, it's God. Let's take for example, David and Saul. Okay, we all know what happened. God chose Saul. God had a plan for Saul. And God uh, you know, selected him as king. But he really upset God. So God had to pick another man, David, a man after his own heart. What happened? 
is it that god did not have plans for saul or god did not have dreams for saul uh, that you know god picked a failure no when god picked saul god picked him with dream with a dream that here is a man who is going to do the work that i want him to do but there was no faith there was disobedience there was rebellion there were many things that derailed him from the purpose of god so the plans and purposes of god he could never accomplish something went wrong in his journey with the lord think about abraham abraham sarah god gave them a promise and said that they would have a child but abraham abraham we even call him a father of faith father of faith there was something that was working in abraham's life that made the promise come through for him what was that now when we read hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 you know it's beautiful it starts with by faith abraham by faith abraham so abraham did something what was and how did he do it by faith so that is the story of his life a man who believed god a man who believed the promise a man who believed the dream that god had for his life and it worked out because by faith abraham and then you read the rest of the passage there many things abraham did you know he went to a place where he would receive the inheritance he did not even know where he was going but he went what does that tell you about abraham he had faith in his heart he started the journey you know and sometimes you just start your vehicle where are you going i don't know god told me to go i am going but where like are you going to turn right left just give us some idea i don't know that's what abraham's testimony is he did not even know where he was going but god said abraham go he started his gaadi right and he started moving how did he do it by faith so what is the special thing that we learn from the life of abraham by faith abraham he moved towards what god wanted for him with the help of faith and similarly you know you keep reading many things about him how he went and how he dwelt with his sons isaac jacob and also it talks about sarah and verse 11 says by faith sarah herself received strength to conceive seed it's impossible we're talking about a 90 year old woman okay which 90 year old woman has this testimony let she bore a child when it was past the age of child bearing impossible cannot happen not scientific you know cannot accept this this uh, happening but sarah has this testimony of bearing a child when the time had already passed remember we talked about the redemptive heart of god how he restores our lives how he restores time he gave an opportunity which she is not supposed to have at that age but she got it but how again you know that scripture there starting on verse 11 by faith by faith now we'll study a lot about this later but today if we were to ask us if our names were written in hebrews chapter 11 by faith put your name there okay by faith your name yeah okay you can say this in your own head you don't have to say it aloud but what is it that you would have done or received or accomplished by faith complete bible college huh? okay <laughs> by faith you all started complete it so by faith remember we in the last class we said the just shall live by faith romans 117 we have to live by faith everything we do has to be done by 
faith. Anything that is not of faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. So all things must be done by faith. And whatever it is, which will be the fruit of our lives or the result of our lives or the accomplishment of our lives, it's only going to happen by faith. By faith. Because God will call us to do things that are bigger than us. That's how God always works. He called Abraham. And he gave him a dream which was too difficult for him. When a man does not have a son, God is saying, Abraham, I'm going to give you descendants, as many as the stars in the sky and the sand on the show. God, it's impossible. How can it happen? Sarah will conceive. God, it's impossible. How can it happen? A big dream, a big vision. But how did they walk into that vision? How did they see the vision fulfilled? Always remember, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. Amen? So, it's by faith. And God is looking for faith. And similarly, you know, there are many uh, other men and women of God with testimonies. But they all did that by faith. So, this is the conclusion. God is almighty. And yet, when there is no faith, even if God has a dream, that dream may not get fulfilled. Right? Uh, yes, there are many other things which, whether we have faith or not, those things will be done. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it in the next class. Because there are certain things in scripture that have already been spoken, whether you and I Believe it or not, like the second coming of Christ, it's going to happen. It has to happen. So there are many things in scripture which are independent of our faith. But in general, the life that we are living, whatever God is calling us to do, we need faith. Just because God is all-powerful and almighty doesn't mean that things will happen automatically or when there is a lack of faith. Sure. So we'll stop here. And um, we can continue in the next class. Any questions? Yes. Um, according to the Psalm chapter 7 and 9, uh, why God tested God's now Abraham hearts? So why God tested Abraham faith? Uh, sorry? God already knows? Abraham hearts, according right. to the Psalm chapter 7 and the verse 9. Mm -hmm. I'm just going back. So why God tested Abraham faith? Seven and verse 9. Established just for the righteous, God tests the hearts and minds. Okay. See, sometimes um, we God does take us, lead us through tests, but tests are meant to, uh, you could put it this way, to promote us, because it does a work in our hearts when we are going through that test with, you know the right character and faith and the right attitude. So there are tests in all our lives because God wants us to become stronger as we come out of that test. Yeah? Done. OK, great. Yes, yes. So this is actually a real thing which, have, which is happening between me and my friend. OK. So the thing is, he's going to have happened. Which can lead him to death. Mm. So, but he, his argument is God has promised me something, and God is faithful to fulfill that. Mm. Though I am doing this, mm. so my argument for that is, uh, you have faith. God has promised you, and He will work it out. Yeah. God is faithful; He will work it out. But you may not be there to see that happening mm. because you are into this bad habit. 
So his argument is God has promised me, though I am doing this, he will be faithful that I will be there to see that promise. Mm -hmm. something, uh, something like that. Yeah, no, see, he's missing the understanding that sin has consequences. Right? So is God's promise true? Yes. Will God uh, fulfill it? Yeah. That's what God wants to do. But if the person does not cooperate, right? for example, even Abraham, we know in between he made a mistake, but he had to come back and align himself to God. So our mistakes and sin can derail us from seeing the promise fulfilled. Yeah. So that's how it is. Yeah. Should we uh, take up in the next class? Okay. Quickly. Can God help us to uh, increase our faith? Can God help us? To increase our faith. To increase our faith. Yes, of course. Any Bible scripture? No. Any Bible scripture? When the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we've been saying that, right? The Holy Spirit can inspire us with a scripture or give us a dream or a vision. What is that doing to us? It's building up faith. So God is helping our faith to grow. Acts chapter 28, okay, you can just go to uh, Acts chapter 27, 28 over there. You will read about how Paul underwent a shipwreck. And in that shipwreck, God promised him and said that, don't worry, there will be no loss of life. So when he heard that, there was faith in his heart. And he was able to go through that journey. So God helped him. God helped his faith. Yeah? Okay. All right. So let's pray and close, everyone. Uh, Shriraj, yeah, I'm going to... Yes, Shriraj? Yeah, there are many questions here which I have just sent it across to. Yeah, there are many questions on the chat. So, uh, since we have run out of time, what I can do is I'll uh, address them in the next class. I hope that's okay with all of us. Yeah, that will be good. I think so. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's uh, pray and close. And I request someone from the class to please pray. How about one of the girls? Just pass the mic to the girls. Yeah, anyone. Okay, so we'll have them pray. Okay, Nonzing, please, please lead us. Let's pray. Let's pray. Uh, our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for giving us this beautiful time. And thank you for giving, uh, bringing us together here. And as we are learning, please, God, let your Holy Spirit stay with us and lead us in every situation. And God. And whatever we are learning, God, let us uh, let us apply in our life and practice it through our life, God. And thank you so much uh, for every uh, for this time. And in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We'll meet on Saturday. Yeah. Thank you, Ma. Pastor. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You, God bless yeah. You. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Bye for now. Is it a pain